Assalamu alaikum. We have been posting tutorials on Win2K. We also posted some videos on different topics on quantum mechanics. Along with this, we are going to start a new series, Semiconductor Physics, in which we shall talk about the basics of the semiconductor physics, that is the semiconducting materials. Then we will talk about the diodes, its working principle and its application. Then we shall talk also about transistors. We start the series with the discussion of the structure of the materials. We shall talk about the solids only because the semiconductor materials that we use are solids. So solids are classified into two types. One is crystal and another one is amorphous. So the in the crystal uh, solids, you shall find a regular arrangement of the atoms in space. That is, there is a long range order in the arrangement of the atoms. But in the amorphous, there is no order in the arrangement of the atoms. Sometimes you shall find an intermediate state between these two. That is, uh, there are regularity in the arrangement in short trains that is you can see here this is one arrangement this is one arrangement this is one this is another arrangement and you shall find the regularity for each of them but there is no long range order this one is called polycrystalline in that case this one is called monocrystalline so whenever we say crystalline solid we actually mean monocrystalline solid. The examples of the crystals are all the metals that we use, the semiconducting materials also, of course, the silicon, the germanium, and also the uh, conductor copper, iron. The example of the amorphous would be glass, plastic, wax, etc. So, this is an example of 2D crystal. So, if you look at this, from start from any point, you will still find that around this point, everything is same. So, if you from here, if you move to here, you will find the same arrangement around this atom. That is, for every atom, it sees the same arrangement around it. So, if you start from this atom if you go this distance you shall find another atom and from here also if you go this distance you shall find another atom but you shall not find any atom in the middle same in this direction also in this uh, structure this distance that is the horizontal dis uh, distance of the of the unit and uh, the vertical unit are same but they may not be same in other structure also. In the 3D system, the simplest one is the simple cubic. That is, the, all the sides are of same length and in every corner of the cube, there is an atom. The, this, uh, the arrangement can also be like this one so this is same as this one the simple cubic but at the center of this structure there is another atom that's why we call it body centered cube that is at the center of the body there is an another atom the structure can be also like this this is we called face centered cube because in every face, if you look at this face, there at the middle, uh, at the center of every face, there is an atom. So, this is same as this one, except that there are atoms at the center of each face. In the cube, there are six phases. So, you shall find six atoms, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, the, in this cubic unit 
or the the cube that we defined by this side the only 1 by 8th portion of each atom is contributed. So, if we look at this picture this is uh, easily understood that the 1 by 8 portion of each atom is contributed to the cube because you will have another 8 sides that is if we, we have this one you will have in this side also one unit in this side also one unit so and here at the middle so this is 4 at the bottom and 4 at the top that is this atom is shared by 8 cube that is that's why we have 1 by 8 portion in this cube so in the body center you have one at the center of the body in the face center you have 6 but for each of the atom only half of the atom is contributed to the cube so this one we call the unit similarly for the simple cube similarly this one is called the unit of the body centered cube this one is the unit of the face centered cube we call this unit cell that is the simplest repeating unit that uh, in the crystal is called the unit cell so um, in mathematically in mathematical representation we write this with this equation here a1 a3 a2 a3 are three vectors we call them primitive vectors and n1 n2 n3 are integers that is the values of these integers can be 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 plus minus 3 and the position vector r that is we also call the lattice vector by this we mean that from any atom if we with a switchable choice of the values of n1 n2 n3 you can go to any other points let's see with the examples i think that will be easy to understand let's take this example this is a 2d structure so i have only a1 and a2 because this is 2d so the vector lattice vector uh, is r has two component vectors and a1 and a2 now if i define these vectors these two vectors like this way so this is a1 this is a2 so i have two vectors of this kind now with the suitable choice of n1 and n2 from this point i can go to the any other point that is to the any other atom if I can do so then this is a crystal but if I cannot do so then either this is not a crystal or the the way I define the vectors are not good enough to represent the structure now let's see the examples so if we choose the n1 to be 1 and n2 to be 0 then from this point with this choice I go to this point but if we choose 0 1 that is the n1 to be 0 then I do not have this part anymore then r should be equals to a2 then if I start from here I end up to this point by this you can by the choice of n1 and 2 you can go to the any other points so if I choose if I choose 1 1 then from here I end up to this point this is 1 and then this way if I choose 2 2 then from here I end up 2 in this direction 2 in this direction that is to this atom so if I want to go say for example to this atom what shall I choose for n1 and n2 so I go 
2 unit in this direction. So, n 1 is 2 and I go negative 1 in this direction. So, n 2 is minus 1. Now, this choice of these vectors is not unique. You can choose in a different way. So, if I choose this way, this should be also the same because this is crystal. So, I shall be able to go to any other points from this one or even if I start from any other point also with this with the choice of n1 and n2. Let us try. So, if I choose 1 0 this is same I end up here starting from here. If I choose 0 1 then starting from here I end up here. But if I choose minus 1 1 then 1 minus 1 that is negatively say in this direction 1 then I go to this one. So, I end up here. So, if I want to go to this point I shall go 2 in the negative direction 2 unit of a 1 in the negative direction that is n 1 will be minus 2 then plus 2 that is n 2 will be 2. So, if I choose 1 1 I go 1 in this unit then I go to this unit. Now, if I choose minus 2 2 then minus 1 minus 2 that is what I told you earlier. Say now for example, I want to go to this point that is starting from here I want to come to this point. So, what I need to do? I have to go to the 3 unit in the x direction that is my n 1 will be 3 then negative a 2 that is n 2 will be minus 1. So, by this actually by the by the choice of n 1 n 2 I can go from here to any other point. You can try uh, choosing any point to make it clear for you. So, there in the three dimension these are the brevis lattice we call this brevis lattice because these are the only possible arrangement that you can have these are 14 brevis lattices. We shall not talk about these in details. Now, there is another thing in the crystal structure. So, first let us answer this. Is it a crystal or not? This is a crystal because we can see the regularity of this arrangement, but this is not any of this brevis lattice. In fact, this is in two dimensional. So, this is not like even this one. But if we look at very carefully, we will see that there are regularity of this kind. Let me show you that. So, if I choose this square, then you can see this is repeated. So, the same one here, same one here. So, this is a structure with this atom. Uh, two dimensional square lattice, but we have one extra with every atom. So, I have this atom with this one, I have this atom with this one, I have this one with this one. Similarly, this, this, this and these are all three pairs also. So, what we can do? We can visualize this as this kind. So, we have the square lattice, but the structure that is repeated is this one. This is actually called there is the lattice plus basis. So, with the every lattice point there is another vector. So, if you want to go to this atom, so you start from here, you come to this lattice point, then with this basis you go to this one. So, you can go here, you can go also here. 
So far, the structures that we have shown, these are all lattice and also crystal. But this is crystal, not lattice. In crystal, remember, we said that there are regular arrangement or the long range order of the arrangement of the atoms. So we have this, so this is crystal. But if we write this vector, then we cannot cover all the points with this vector. That's why it's not lattice. But if we add an a basis, then we can cover it. So with the lattice, we add a basis, then we get the crystal structure. In real life, uh, so before going to the real life examples, this one also is the another arrangement. I think this one simpler than this one. So this is a square. In, in the center of the square, you have another atom. So I colored them differently to show you that this is different than this one. So this is a square lattice. So you have one at the center. But if this one is the same as this one, this will be a triangular lattice like this one. Then that time your structure, you can visualize that this is a triangle, the same as the triangle, this one. And here the triangle would be this one also. This. So this would be a triangular lattice if these are to be the same. But this is also crystal. If we look at the only these atoms, then the lattice points are these. This is added with the basis. Now this is a real life example. So this is the structure of sodium chloride. So this is sodium and this is chlorine. So you can see the corner atoms are sodium and with the one sodium atom is connected to the six chlorine. This is not clear from here, but let's see the chlorine atom here. You can see the chlorine atom is connected with one, two, three, four, five, and six. This six sodium. Similarly, for every sodium atom is connected with six chlorine atom. So this is a 2D projection. That's why you cannot see the, the atoms at the top or at the bottom. So this is crystal, but this is not lattice. Actually, this is two lattices, two face center lattice. So if we just only look at the sodium, so this is the face centered cube. So this is, and similarly, if we look at the chlorine, so this is a face centered cube. Uh, sorry, not this one. This one, actually, the one in the middle. So the corner atoms are chlorine and also the face centered atom that is chlorine. So in the sodium chloride structure, two face centered cube inserted to each other. That is two lattices are inserted that make one crystal structure. So this is another example of crystalline structure. So you can see this is a face centered cube. If we follow these atoms, you see this is a face centered cube, but there are also atoms with this. These are added with the basis. Actually, this is two structure inserted each other. So this is another one. Here there are four structure actually. So uh, th this is one cubic and this one another cube. The manganese with this one. So the, with the silicon one and the, with the zirconium, there is one face centered cube. There are four face centered cube. In two of them, the same atom, that is the manganese, that's why it's difficult to visualize, but they are the crystal structure also. So this is another example. This is the silica. Uh, so you can see, if you see it without 
paying attention you may say you may feel that this is an amorphous system but if you look at this this is the unit and if you follow then this one is the same and you see that the structure if you see this one the same way these are repeated now if you follow this one you see the structures are like this so if you take this one there will be the similar arrangement similarly with this kind of this one so they are colored differently i don't know you can visualize it or not but if you pay attention you will be able to see it there's they are arranged in a regular way so this is not the brevis lattice but this is a crystal now when we talk about the crystal there is also one important thing that is how we defined different planes that is in this structure you have one plane of this kind one plane of this one there may be another plane in the in middle like this so how do we define them in defining them we use miller indices so this is same as the the lattice that we talk about but this is in the reciprocal space that is the reciprocal of these uh, the vectors have been taken the vectors that we are talking a1 a2 a3 are in real space but b1 b2 b3 are in reciprocal space once we get the a1 a2 a3 we can calculate the b1 b2 b3 so the numbers multiplied with these vectors the reciprocal vectors that is a primitive reciprocal lattice vectors are written this way and this is called miller indices so if we look at this plane so if we look at this plane so this plane is intersecting to the one unit in the in this direction say this is x direction say this is y direction and this is z direction then we have this is intersecting in two unit this is intersecting in three unit what we do we don't take these uh, vector a b c we take the number so we take one we take from here two we take from here three and we take the reciprocal of this so we take one two three we take the reciprocal of this then we simplified reduced them to the lowest term so this becomes 6 3 2 and finally we write it like this way 6 3 2 so this plane is 6 3 2 let's see more examples so let's look at this one first let's see this plane So we are talking about this plane now. You see, if we look at this plane, this plane is intersecting to the x direction to the one unit, but it is parallel to the y direction and also parallel to the z direction. So this is one infinity infinity. That is the intersecting points are one infinity infinity. That is it is intersecting to the x direction at one unit and it doesn't intersect to y and z axis so if we want to represent this plane with the miller indices that we take the reciprocal of them and this is simple one zero zero similarly if we talk of if we take this one then this is intersecting to the one in the y direction and it doesn't intersect to x direction and z direction that is it intersecting points are infinity one zero infinity one infinity that it become zero one zero so this is of this plane that is infinity infinity one so this becomes 
1, 1, 0. Now let's look at this plane. This one intersecting to the one unit at x direction and intersecting at one unit to the y direction, but it doesn't intersect with the z direction that is it's parallel to the z direction. So the intersecting points would be 1, 1, infinity, that is the Miller indices will be 1, 1, 0. We have to take the reciprocal of this, remember. Now what about this one? This is intersecting to the x direction at one unit, y direction at one unit, and the z direction also by one unit. So the intersecting points are 1, 1, 1. If we take the reciprocal, then this is same. So this plane is 1, 1, 1 plane. There are some more examples. So this one actually 2, 1, 0 because this is intersecting half. So these are the, the planes that we talk about. So there is a beautiful site. This is the address of the site. If you go and if you type this, it will show you the, the plane, uh, Miller indices of the plane, and it will show the plane. You can try with different uh, numbers and to see how the plane will look like. Now, we like to talk about the bond of the atoms in the solid. So, if you have two hydrogen atoms, they are free, but when you bring them together, there is an overlap, that, that the levels are splitted. So, this has energy level, this atom electron has one energy level. When they became, you bring them close together to form hydrogen molecule, the energy levels are splitted. One is bonding, another one is antibonding. So this is in bonding state. If it's antibonding, then they will separate. Now this, uh, the energy of this one is different than this one. So if we, if where they are at infinite distances but that is the distances between these two atoms are very high or big they all have the same fixed value like this it says these are the uh, energy levels of different uh, orbitals but when you bring them close together they becomes splitted and uh, if you bring many of them then these energy levels are simply look like band because of the uh, overlapping between them or they stack one another one uh, upon another so it simply look like band these are also uh, actually if you zoom in these are very fine discrete lines but in a practical purpose we call them band that makes our life easy to explain and understand so when you bring many of the atoms that is in the crystal what we see we see the bands not the energy of individual electrons depending on the separation of the bands the, at, uh, the crystal or the solids have different type also. So the one filled with electron, the top field, we call the balance band that is fully filled and the one next to the balance band is called conduction band. So if there is a large gap between them, and the balance one is completely filled and the conduction band is completely empty, then we call this insulator. That is, there is no electron or carrier at this conduction band and therefore it cannot conduct electricity or current. No matter what 
whatever the voltage you apply because this gap is so large there is no at electron can jump from here to this band to conduct electricity. But if this gap is very small and uh, with a switchable potential or even with the room temperature uh, with the increase of temperature some of the electron can move from here to the conduction band then we call this kind of solids are semiconductor. Remember this is fully filled and this is also empty and these all are we are talking about zero Kelvin temperature. In room temperature, you won't have any carrier here, but in the semiconductor, you shall have some electrons or some carrier, charge carrier in this conduction band. In that case, this will be partially empty and this will be partially filled. Now, what happens in the conductor? So, this is insulator, this is semiconductor. In the conductor, there is an overlap between the conduction and the balance band. That is the carrier or electrons in this region, they belong to the both of the band. That is, they, whenever you apply any voltage, they are ready to conduct. That is, the electrons in this region can conduct whatever voltage you apply. That's why they call conductor. Now, of course, when we say small, we do not actually have any specific values. Roughly speaking, if the band gap is about one electron volt, then we call it semiconductor. Even sometimes if it is two, three electron volt, we also call it semiconductor, depending on the situation and how you want to use them. We talk about the crystals there is one important thing that these crystals that we talk are all ideal cases. So these are all ideal cases. But in reality, you shall not find anything like that. So you may have a arrangement that is basically crystal, but there are some defects. So if you look at here, they are supposed to be one atom, but this is missing. So this is we call vacancy. This, this defect is called vacancy. Here, this is an extra atom. This should not be here. If we say this is crystal, this should not be here. In fact, this is crystal with the defect. We called it interstitial. Now, here one is missing, here one is extra, but this is same as this one. But if you have this atom that is different than the other atoms, the, the atoms of the crystal, and it is, uh, it replaced the one. So they are supposed to be one like this, but we have this one. So this is we call substitutional impurity. There is an, uh, if all are like this one this is pure but this is impurity and it substituted the one was sitting here that's why we call it substitutional impurity if we have an extra impurity we call it interstitial impurity the defects also can be like this this is called dislocation line this could be also screw dislocation if you look at this, then you see, so this is this line comes here, then it's not continued like this one. This is comes here and is no more continued. So this is an extra line. So this is this location line. But if you and uh, if you see this one, I think this is difficult to visualize here, but this is extra plane. So this can be because of this, they, they have a, there is a shift of this, the whole structure shifted. So you have extra here, you have extra here. But if you look at the middle region, you don't see the defect. So this is this defect you can see when you see in the long range. 
they can be uh, because of some shear forces like this or that so this is uh, the all that we want to talk in the structure of the solid now so we talk about the ideal crystal then we talked how to define them mathematically then depending on the the band structure how to uh, categorize them in semiconductor conductor and insulator then we talked about the defects of the crystal the defects are the component of our daily life because the ideal crystals uh, is extremely difficult to find ideal crystal but our goal is to make the crystal as ideal as possible also at the same time we cannot avoid defects the cause of the defects like here it can be the force it can be the temperature it can be many of this kind so that's all for today thank you